All right, in this station, we want to start by identifying our objects. So let's watch the interaction first. And we can see that the card moves backwards and the car moves um, away from the card. And so our two objects in this case are going to be the car and the card. Okay, when I say card, I'm talking about this thing right here. Whoops. There we go. And so let's back that up so we can identify what's happening. And so we can see that since the card is moving back away from the car, the car is pushing on the card. So we'll say that the force acting on the card is from the car. So force on card from car. And then because Newton's third says there's a equal and opposite reaction for every action, there is an opposite directional force of equal strength, or as we say, magnitude acting on the car. from the card. So the card is pushing back on the car, which is why the car wants to move forward. And then the car is pushing on the card, which is pushing the card out from underneath the winding car. In this station, we see we have two objects uh, that are fairly easy to identify. Uh, we have the slingshot and we have the canister. And so we know if those are the two objects, then they are applying force to each other. And so in this case, the slingshot is applying a push of force to the canister. We can see from the rubber band here uh, being stretched and pushing on the canister. And using Newton's third law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, there is a push back on the slingshot from the canister. And when we watch that visual in slow motion, we'll see that the motions of the objects do show that the forces are pushing in those directions. And just to make it more clear, um, the canister is an object, and the slingshot is our other object. And so when we play that, we can see the motions reflect those forces. The cool thing about this demo is that we can actually see equal and opposite. So our two objects are going to be the spring scales, object one, object two. And when we watch the measurements in Newtons on each spring scale, we can see that they actually uh, match each other. So equal forces, but pulling in opposite directions. And when we take a look at the spring scale readings, we can see that they do match through all of the different pull forces that are applied to them. In this example, our two objects are going to be the ball as well as the human skateboard apparatus. And so we can see in the video that when the ball's pushed, by the human, so we'll say that there is a push, so the force on ball. There is an equal and opposite force back onto the human. Force on human. And when we watch the video closely, we can actually see that as soon as the push force begins, the wheels start to move. So force and the wheels start to creep back in the opposite direction. Push with the wheels. There we go. So at this station we had to drop two balls. We dropped a clay ball and we dropped a ping pong ball. And so we can see that there are two very different interactions between the two trials uh, where the clay ball bounced and the ping pong ball did not. Um, but if we're simply looking at action and reaction uh, forces between the objects, um, Newton's law still does hold. So if we're looking at the clay ball, for example, uh, the force exerted by the ball onto the table 
is equal in strength but opposite in direction to the force of the table back on the ball. Now, the bouncing uh, has to do with the fact that the energy from the collision uh, went into reshaping the clay, whereas the ping pong ball retained its shape, and so uh, the energy was uh, back into the bouncing of the ball. Um, so, but in terms of the forces, uh, both the ping pong ball and the clay ball had forces exerted on them from the table that were equal to the force that they exerted on the table when they interacted. Another question that we addressed here was, well, the ball bounced or the ball squished, but uh, why didn't we see any motion from the table or the floor if we dropped it on the floor? And this is where we're really starting to see that the mass of these objects really does matter. So you could exert uh, you know, equal and opposite forces, but obviously the mass of the table or the floor is much greater than the mass of the ball. And so while the force might be enough to move the ball, the force may be really, really tiny compared to the you know, mass of, say, the floor, which is connected to Earth. Uh, so that's something that we want to keep thinking about uh, in regards of, you know, masses and forces and how that relate, those relate to each other. So with our Hero engine here, um, we can see that it is spinning. And the reason why it is spinning uh, is that we have equal and opposite reactions going on here between our two objects, which are the whoops, not cap, cup, and our other object is actually the water. Okay, so the water, as you can see, is flowing out of the straw, which means that the cup, or I guess the straw part of the cup, is pushing on the water in this direction. Now, because we know Newton's third says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, we know that the water must be pushing back on the cup. And this is actually happening in two places, and we see that happening over here as well, which gives us our spinning motion in the direction that the water is pushing back on the cup. All right, so at this station, you had to slap the table, basically. And so we have our two objects, which is the table and your hand. And so in the first case, you just had to, uh, whoops, need to ungroup those. Uh, you just basically had to slap the table gently. So you weren't really slapping it too hard, just a little bit. And so the force that you were exerting on the table, we'll show here, and it wasn't too much because you weren't really slapping it that hard. So force on table from hand. And of course, because we're looking at Newton's third law, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the table is exerting force on you back. All right. Now, on the second trial, you guys had to 
There we go. You guys had to slap the table much harder. So you really hit it harder. And so we have the same objects, but in this case, you exerted more force on the table by hitting it harder. Well, the reason it felt so much different and probably hurt a little bit was because the table was exerting all that force right back on your hand. And so you probably felt it a lot more severely than you did the first trial.